Peoples. Welcome to the South African Civil Society Information Service. I'm Fazila Farrakh in Johannesburg. We're talking about education this morning. The kind of education that a government produces, coupled with the kinds of jobs that an economy produces, is intrinsic to the kind of society that is developed. And clearly in South Africa, we're not getting things terribly right. We have a country where there are masses of poorly educated people, coupled with high levels of unemployment that combine to make a society that is highly unequal. What we need to do is ensure that we align our education system with the economy to create a better society. And our guest today is someone that has thought about this a great deal. He is co-editor of a book titled Education, Economy and Society. And we're talking to Salim Valley. Salim is the director of the Center for Education Rights and Transformation, um, also known as CERT. Welcome to Saxus, Salim. Thank you, Fazila. You know, education is really just one of the most talked about topics in South Africa, and it's clearly linked to the fact that we have high levels of unemployment. Um, the most common issue that's highlighted in South Africa is the skills gap in our country. And the contention is that we have, we have the jobs in the market out there, but that we don't actually have the skills. Um, what's your view on this contention that there's a skills gap or a skills mismatch in South Africa? Well, Fazila, you know, the skills mismatch argument goes back to the 50s. Essentially, it's blaming education for the lack of jobs instead of looking reflectively at uh, uh, the core uh, social and power relations in society. Uh, it's looking at the economy and why a crisis of capitalism gets passed off as a skills crisis. Uh, you know, education is seen as a panacea for society's woes um, um, and um, we argue that the purpose of education and the value of education is much more than a purely instrumental one or a banal, productive, uh, entrepreneurial role, that it's also about social justice, it's about democratic participation. The point is that skills and knowledge is indispensable and uh, uh, there is a lot wanting in our education system and, and certainly we're not getting the quality of education our society requires, there's no doubt about it. So uh, let me just stop you on that issue of quality of education. Clearly you have different views on, on the quality question. I mean, can you give us some specifics uh, on the issue of quality of education? Sure. I mean, the, the point is that if we have 90% of schools which don't have functioning uh, libraries or laboratories, some of the most basic skills we require is around reading, it's around coming to grips with the multilingual challenge. It's about committed teachers, professional teachers. It's about early childhood development, the most important period in a person's life. All of that is vital and uh, we're not doing well uh, as far as that is concerned. Um, and I totally agree, we agree, but we make the point that quite often business points its finger at education when it's business itself that is creating unemployment. It's this neoliberal system that puts people out of work. So the demand side quite often is not emphasized. The blame is put on the supply side. And we think both need to be looked at. I need to make the point that there are many countries around the world, if you look at Europe at the moment, particularly southern Europe, you find a number of young people who are graduates who can't find jobs. In our country, we have a significant number of graduates. We have people with the skills, but not the jobs. 
So it's really erroneous to say that we have the jobs but not the skills. That's a false argument. In fact, it's an ideological hoax because it blames the victims, so-called victims themselves. I mean, what, you know, we have industries that have been decimated in our country. Look at the clothing and textile industry. In the Western Cape, for example, tens of thousands of workers with a high level of skills and experience who've been put out of work because of cheap imports, because the, you know, countries in the East can rely on sweatshop labor. Look at the extractive industry, the bedrock industry of our economy, uh, because of the exchange rate, perhaps, or because of the depletion of natural resources, companies move. Now, all of that causes unemployment. The economic decisions we make, you know, the past 20 years have shown that this idea that with higher levels of skills, we will get jobs and therefore we will have economic growth, it's a really simplistic argument. Um, and it's a myth honestly. Um, and this book tries to look at the relationship between education, economy and society. You cannot divorce education from the social context. So how do we change the conversation and what do we change it to? Well, I, I think the conversation should be linked to a very proud history we have a tradition of, of, of critical scholarship and praxis. The book is dedicated to Neville Alexander, a scholar, an educationist, but uh, somebody who believed in a broader reflective purpose of education. It's about uh, socially useful jobs, but it's also about social justice, creating an in inclusive uh, and transform society and economy. So we have contributors who look at higher education, who look at um, uh, solutions like uh, the wage subsidy. It's really a false solution. It creates more stratification. It doesn't come to grips with the issues of unemployment in our country. Um, and we look at alternatives. We look at this Manichian divide between the head and the hand. Um, skills should not be separate um, from knowledge. Um, we look at the traditions in our country. We look at people's education, education for production. We look at worker education and we speak to the tradition of great educationists like Ruth First, Ivy Tabata, um, you know, Rick Turner, Steve Biko, Matthew Goniwe, Neville Alexander, people who understood that there is a broader, uh, 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 more uh, expansive uh, purpose of education. Can you give me some examples of uh, countries or even cities and towns where you think that they've embraced a more progressive uh, conception of educating people so we can talk about a practical case of how it's supposed to be? Well, there, there are many countries around the world. Uh, you know, you can look at some social democratic countries like Finland, which doesn't have private education, which puts a lot of premium on general education, uh, understanding the world, democratic citizenship, as well as technical skills, or what people call STEM subjects, science, technology, uh, engineering, mathematics. Uh, look at Cuba as well, but you know, um, and in many countries around the world, there are very vital experiments, but we had that in our own country. We had huge social movements around education with production. It's combining a curriculum, an exciting curriculum, which links technical knowledge with social concerns, with an understanding of um, subject matter in all its variations and permutations, not just the technical side. In the world today, 
we have uh, you know, a fundamental problem around ecology. And uh, unless we come to grips with that, the, really the existence of the human species it ha is at risk. And if we uh, blithely continue with speaking about economic growth and burning fossil fuels without factoring that into our curriculum, without understanding that socially useful work and decent jobs is the way to grow, go, not just this economic growth, which only a few people benefit, um, and we don't create the kind of jobs that are socially useful that we need. So we have that tradition in our country. There are numerous practical examples where um, uh, the alternative is there. This uh, system has failed dismally. We have more unemployment, uh, more inequality, and poverty continues. It's not the solution. So this book is a challenge to educationists and others in society to think creatively, um, to understand that we shouldn't just have a narrow understanding of education, but it's, it's a much broader uh, view that is necessary. And we will find alternatives. I mean, you know, education and schooling and post-schooling that links to societal needs, um, to public works, to an economy that is not based on profit and greed, but on the needs of people, um, uh, housing development, um, uh, uh, social care, um, uh, etc. There are many purposes that could be put to practical use instead of just the business uh, labor market requirements of business. Now, uh, there is agreement, you know, that we've got to improve uh, schooling in South Africa. And I think, you know, people across the spectrum can agree on what the basic fundamentals are over there. But I think where there is some disagreement is with higher education and what the outcomes are there and for what purpose people go to universities and colleges, etc. Can you talk a little bit about that and, you know, what we should be shifting attention to um, in that sphere? Sure. We have a chapter in the book uh, on the knowledge economy. More and more universities are seen as corporate institutions that need to speak to business instead of being accountable to the society. So programs and disciplines that have an edge in the global marketplace um, are seen as the ones that need to be supported and privileged. And I think that is disastrous. So this emphasis on STEM subjects alone at the expense of humanity, humanities is wrong. And I think even those disciplines in the natural sciences need to be aligned not just to business, but need to use their skills, their expertise, their knowledge to meeting the needs of society. And if you can, you can look at every discipline at the university level. Is it doing this? Is it building, encouraging students to architectural or, or built environment students to build casinos or ecologically sound low cost housing? And we can go on with all the other disciplines as well. Salim, thank you very much for joining us at Saxus. You're welcome, thank you. And thank you to our viewers and listeners for joining us at the South African Civil Society Information Service. Remember, if you want more social justice news and analysis, you can get that at our website at saxus.org.za.